Hi everyone, welcome back this week. Now this week I want to share a significant study that was published in the Nature magazine uh, about how an anti-COVID drug speeds up the virus evolution. Now I haven't seen that being discussed or covered by a lot of my fellow YouTube doctors, uh, but as a pharmacologist, I think it's very important that the public need to know the risk of drug associated or related virus mutations or evolutions in general. So let's get started. All right. So the anti-COVID drug that we're talking about here is monopyravir, which is made by Merck. Now, I covered this drug extensively in my older videos like two years ago. Now, you can check out the details after this video if you're interested to look at it, but I'll be very brief here to cover this drug. Now, monopyravir okay, is a drug that chemically looks like the building blocks of RNA. So it can trick the virus to use the drug instead of the actual building blocks when they synthesize their RNA during the replication cycle. And because monopyravir is a fake RNA building block, when it gets into the RNA strand, it creates one or more mutations. And the theory is that the drug would cause many, many errors in the viral RNA and makes it unable to carry on its viral cycle, infect new cells, and transmit to another person. So I said in theory, because instead of weakening the virus, antiviral drugs that work like monopyravir could sometimes make a mutated virus that can still survive and pass on to another person. Now, this theory has surfaced for a long time, even during the approval process or authorization process of that drug. Now, but now, a new paper, and this paper that I was just referring to, all right, uh, you know, published in the high tier journal Nature by a team of researchers from the UK, specifically uh, the University of Cambridge proved that this th theory is very plausible. Now, so this channel, or like I, I've always been to, is geared more toward the uh, general educated public. So I'm not going to get into uh, the two technical things here, um, but in like just to cover the basis here, let's take a look here. Now, monopyravir can always uh, cause uh, two types of of mutations in the viral genome, which is from A to G or from C to U or T, okay? And the article says because of these uh, fingerprint-like identifiable mutations, the research teams was able to precisely um, scan for monopyravir-induced genomic mutations in the SARS-2 COV, uh, COV, SARS CoV-2 virus samples. And they actually saw thousands of viruses with many mutations, and sometimes more than 100 uh, had apparently survived the drug treatment and transmitted it to another person. And these mutated virus also continued to gain more natural mutations along the way, all right? Now, so let me fill in the gaps between mutations in the virus genome and mutations in the spike protein. Now, the central dogma of molecular biology is that uh, the genome cooks for the proteins, and sometimes you can have a small, tiny change in the genome that is so-called silent and doesn't change the protein structure or protein product, but sometimes it is the opposite and the changes is observable in the protein. So in this study, the research team actually find out that uh, many monopyravir induced mutations accumulate in the spike uh, protein coding region. So here is the um, graph that they're referring to. Well, let's go down to figure Five. All right, so here is what they presented that, uh, that data. And all of these uh, monopyravir-induced spike mutations found in uh, 
variants of concerns or chronic infections that are associated with, uh, along with the resistance to some monoclonal antibody treatments. Now, if that is not enough, the team also saw a temporal associations between the high G2A mutations and the monopiravir prescriptions, uh, you know, rate in the UK. All right. So, what do we know here? That so, in a simple word, this paper showed that monopiravir induced mutations were not as deadly for the virus in some cases, and sometimes these mutations got carried on and added to the natural mutations that is happening in the virus. And putting two things together, here is that the drug, if, or, if not already has, then it has a very high potential to help speed up the virus evolutions. Now, clinically, this drug is not very uh, efficacious, uh, efficacious in reducing COVID-19 associated deaths and hospitalizations. So prescribers need to think really carefully if monopiravir is still a drug that they would want to prescribe to their patients. So now what did Merck say? Well, like always, uh, drug companies denied the findings, especially from academia, and said it is a, a circumstantial association. Now, now, they can, of course, say whatever they want and protect their market value. But in fact, th that uh, the sales of monopiravir are already down 83% from last year. So on a personal level, if someone takes monopiravir, what happened? Like it's also possible to change the immune response. And actually uh, this paper basically, um, you know, referenced an older paper saying that uh, monopiravir uh, uh, compared to control is that uh, when someone took uh, monopiravir, it really reduced uh, the viral load at day five compared to a placebo. Uh, but the viral load uh, got higher in day 14. So definitely there are some differences in how our um, uh, immune response, our body to try to fight these uh, slightly mutated uh, virus in the body, all right? Now, so that is about the paper. Now, I know there is a bigger extent of this topic is that, well, if this antiviral can potentially speed up viral mutations, what about other well, antiviral drugs? Would they speed up the, the viral evolution process? The antivirals that looks like the building blocks of either RNA or DNA are collectively called nucleoside analogs. And most of them work by uh, getting into the growing chain of the RNA or DNA to stop the chain from growing any longer and stopping the viral replication process and cycle. Now these drugs have been used to, to treat hepatitis B and HIV and are different than monopiravir. So those drugs in general don't induce these crazy mutations uh, in the viral genome. So they would not cause mutations similar to what was observed with monopiravir. Now, so I hope that this video shed some light on how uh, antiviral could speed up viral mutations and evolutions. And it is actually quite unique to a uh, monopiravir compared to other more common antiviral drugs that is in the market. Now, it is something for us to think about very carefully and be cautious, but not to panic at the same time. Now, again, this channel is dedicated to helping you make informed health decisions and learn to live a healthier life. And if that's something uh, you value deeply, I hope to see you again next time. And thank you very much for watching this video and this week's, uh, you know, listening to me. Uh, so take care and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and I'll see you next time. Bye.